A special thanks to our friends at Nissan of Mankato for loaning us this beautiful Rogue. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And today we're going to take a look at this beautiful 2019 Nissan Rogue. This is the SL trim and it's all wheel drive. And it's a beautiful pearlescent like a pearl. white. Yeah. Uh, it's got nice sparkle in it. Yeah, anyway, we'll talk about that later. But uh, we are two, two guys, guys in a ride. ride. And Nathan, today we're going to take this car for a drive and yep. tell the people our first impressions behind the wheel. Talk about acceleration and comfort, interior space, fit and finish. Uh, and then I'm going to take you for a review of the outside, talk about the horsepower, the wheelbase, the capacities of cargo, um, um, I don't know what else, uh, well, the styling and some other things. And Nathan, what are you going to do? I'm going to take you for a tour on the inside and show you basically everything on the inside, talk about some of the technology and some of the features on the inside. And even some buttons that we found earlier yes. on the drive because we were trying to find a few things that thought they were maybe in the electronic uh, infotainment screen and they're actually actual, uh, actual physical, physical buttons. push on and off buttons, which is really cool. It's kind of it's kind of refreshing to see that. Yeah. So if you will though, consider please uh, becoming a channel member. And what does that mean? Well, you hit that subscribe button, and uh, you know Nathan, thanks for asking. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. Hey Rob, how much does it cost <laughs> to subscribe to our channel? Absolutely nothing. Then what does it matter then? Well, what it does, it tells YouTube that you're interested in our content and that you want to save uh, our channel to be able to come back and watch more videos. Yeah. So make sure you also hit that bell notification at the top. And if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up and uh, leave some comments below. So Nathan, what do you say? Let's, Let's go, go for a ride. ride. All right. Okay, so here we are. It's a beautiful sunny day. And oh. uh, <laughs> you got a huge sunroof here. I didn't even notice it was yes. a double sunroof. Okay. Yeah, one for me, one for you. <laughs> All right. So what are we in, Nathan? We are in a 2019 Nissan Rogue, which is one of the best-selling small SUVs. Yep. And this is the SL all-wheel drive. Trim level. And uh, so, if you've never been in one, welcome to our test drive. We've never been in one either. This no. is our initial, just hopped in the car, just left the dealership. This is our first impressions. So talking about the seating one of the things since i've never i mean the last time i rode in a nissan was in 19 about 80 uh, 87 88 and uh so the, yes he's that old he's actually older than that <laughs> all right the um <laughs> did i the, kill your train of thought you, you did for a second no then i had to make a turn right away he is that old see it's yeah. like psh, the brain's just fading in and out <laughs> well, Rob just changes conversations mid-sentence, so at least I don't do that. At least my train of thought can, you know, sustain a little bit. My Anyways, train of thought likes to run different rails. <laughs> yeah, I just, you could say that again. No, no. So what I'm coming on is the power buttons. Um, so the um, the the one that moves the seat forward and backwards uh, works right, you know, as you would expect it to go forward and backwards. But when and then. You know, to go like a, a, an up or down is, is is a different. It goes straight up, straight down, but it kind of like when it goes down or up, it like goes backwards down, oh, and then forwards up instead of we're more straight up and straight down. Just a different feel. Okay. Um, so far, I, we're just about to get on the highway here, so hopefully we will uh, uh, get a little turn it. You know, feeling the comfort a little bit more, but. It's a it's a nice it's a nice vehicle. I, I like the the layout. It's got a lot of uh, it's all soft touch materials in here. Um, the seat itself, I think, is comfortable. Well, I've said it just I, got I like in, it. and my first comment was, "Wow, this seat is comfortable." Yeah, I, I mean, I hadn't even completely gotten in the car yet, and I just like, "Wow, this is really cool." I was trying to push him out. Uh, all this is the sun, all the sunroof is a little open, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. I've got a crack for heat. Oh, we, we want the air. Well, you know, we do, but we want to let the heat out first. When I picked it up, it was a little toasty in here. Uh, the, um, but no, this the seats are, I like it. This one does have a, a lumbar. Um, I'm a, I haven't had time to check the passengers. I, I don't have the up and down on this side. I okay. Got, on the back, it can go forward or back. Uh, and then on the bottom, I can go forward or back. So I don't have uh, height adjustability on this side. Okay. So that one is X number, and this is a few numbers less adjustability. 
the um, wow, it is comfortable. My, my leg, my leg room is, is fine up here in the in the driver's area. We'll see when I step back We're just in the review. The noise from that. I didn't yeah, know. so let's just close that then. Oh, that's so cool. There we go. So we're closing up the sunshade here. And there we go, a little quieter on here. So now, let's, let's see what we talk about road noise. I, I can hear a little bit of the engine. Yeah. Um, but boy. For overall. Are you at highway speed yet? Yeah, well, Honest. I'm at 60. Oh. Well, okay, 65 through here, so I'm just wondering what it, I'm just trying 65 to figure out what the sound now. level. Yeah. It's, it's a fairly dampened yeah. sound. It is. I mean, it really is. I'm, I'm going over those little tar strips. You can hardly hear them. You can more or less feel them than hear them. But even though they're feeling them, you, you, it's just a small... Oh yeah, no, it's a you're very not, small feel. I'm just, up and down, but I'm yeah. just, sound-wise, you know, I'm just impressed that it's that uh, quiet in the cab. Huh? Initial impression is, is, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. Okay, right away, first impression of this is the dash panel is so much lower. It feels like than some of the competitors. The, the speedometer and instrument display seems like it's set down a little lower and you're looking well above and you've got a great view out the front windshield. So that's kind of cool. I like that. All right. So we just did some video of the uh, acceleration, but uh, now I actually get to experience. How was it, Nathan? Did you say it was a little dogged before? It, it, it sure seemed to me. I'll have to run a timer compared to, you know, when I hit 60. Okay. But... It seemed a little slow. What size engine does this have? Well, let's try it here. Oh. It's a little four-cylinder engine, but... Sixty. Uh, about 11 seconds. This isn't a turbo at all. Can't be. No. Okay. So if it was turbo, you'd, you'd start getting a lot better response. Yeah. Well, you'd feel that turbo kick in, right. and it, it didn't spool up or anything. So no, it's not. All right. Hold on. Gonna break. Go. Very secure. Didn't do a panic stop, just did a quick, steady stop. That's kind of cool. I, you know, it's got decent acceleration. I mean, it's not a sports car. It's a, it's a midsize SUV. So you've you got the family in here and stuff. So uh, I think it's all right. Now, while he's playing with a seat, I'm not even going to tell him that I'm going to start <laughs> doing the, the, the handling and see. Wow, it's very responsive. And it's... You said it earlier, it's very dampened, and I like that. Mm -hmm. It's comfortable. I think one thing that gets me the most, though, again, that, that dash panel, the whole dash panel seems like it should be up another three or four inches, but because it isn't, it gives you a huge well, view out that's the front. What I, I think that's what I was talking about. I didn't remember I commented on that. Yeah, that you And I didn't see. really know what it was, but yeah. I think you're right. The dashboard is really flattened out. And, and low. Lower. Yeah, even with my, you know, Nathan, you had your seat up higher, but I've got mine quite a bit lower than you had yours, and it's still low, which is great because it lends to the whole uh, visibility. Mm -hmm. You've got you got a lot of glass, and it's a lot more easily viewed out the front and the side windows. That's kind of cool. It's kind of mm -hmm. unique. Something I haven't noticed on its competitors. Okay, so Nathan, this is my favorite thing. Uh, it's really not a styling feature of my favorite thing. I think it's more a necessity of um, airflow and aerodynamics. But I gotta say, this fin here that usually does, like I said earlier, meld into the glass on other SUVs that I've seen, this kind of sticks out and is a fin. If you can see this on the camera, let me see if I can get it on this side maybe. You can see it sticks out past the window and you can get your hand back in there 
so it's kind of like an airfoil and I really like that I think that's cool uh, would be one of the cool things that I think uh, that's really neat on this vehicle and that would be my favorite thing okay, so here we have the backup camera I really like that I really love the fact that it's a 360 view so Okay, so while I'm here, I will tell you it is a displacement of 2.5 liters. It is a double overhead cam, 16 valve, four cylinder engine. Does have 170 horsepower and it has 175 uh, pound foot of torque. Now, this is a 2019 Nissan Rogue SL all wheel drive, and there are many, many different options, starting with the S front wheel drive at 25,020. The S all-wheel drive at 26,370. The SV front-wheel drive at 26,440. The SV all-wheel drive at 27,790. Then there is an SV hybrid front-wheel drive at 27,700. An SV hybrid all-wheel drive at 29,050. Hey, Nathan. Okay. An SL that's front wheel drive at uh, 31,490. An SL that's all wheel drive at 32,840. An SL hybrid 31,640. And an SL hybrid all wheel drive at 32,990. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 10 different available trim packages on this vehicle ranging from 25,020 to start up to 32,990 to start and of course you know options on top of that uh, pick and choose a la carte what you like now this vehicle does have the intelligent all-wheel drive system it has hill start assist it does have the Xtronic CVT continuously variable transmission and we noticed that on the acceleration on the drive it does kind of drone a little bit and it really doesn't uh, I don't think makes good use of that 175 pound foot of torque now it does have with that CVT it has a sport mode shifter and then we have four-wheel ventilated disc brakes four-wheel anti-lock brakes and electronic brake force distribution there is an independent front suspension, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, and vehicle speed sensitive electric power steering. The uh, tires and wheels are P225, 55R19, all season tires on 19 by seven inch aluminum alloy wheels. On the front end styling, you have halogen headlights, intelligent auto headlights, LED daytime running lights, and fog lights. On the side of the vehicle, you do have the uh, power body colored heated mi outside mirrors with the LED turn signals built in. And you can see we have the flashers on. Have the nice chrome or brushed stainless uh, roof rails. And you ha do have the integrated spoiler. Now also on this vehicle, you do have the touch button here. If you got the key fob in your pocket, you can touch the lock. And uh, I don't believe there is a sensor on the back. So you touch the lock and then you walk up with the key and you can just touch to unlock as well. It does have a motion activated lift gate. I don't think that's actually gonna work right now since Nathan is in the car, uh, but it's kind of cool because Nissan does give you uh, instructions on how to actually use that they put it on a sticker right on their back window it does as you see have UV reducing solar glass rear privacy glass and there are LED tail lights as well okay talking about the styling on this vehicle I do like the black cladding that follows around the bumper underneath and then you've got it around the fog lights too and then it goes around the wheels and along the bottom but you have a little bit of a chrome strip along the bottom to kind of brighten things up and then you see the cut line there now interestingly you do have this cut line along what i would call the hips or the belt line i guess uh right below the window frame uh, you do have that that starts up softly on the hood right here and goes all the way back and you see it dip there under the mirror and then it comes up and wraps right around that uh, rear quarter window you do have that line but i do like the uh, lines around the wheel wells that flare the wheel wells out quite a bit more you've got the black and then you have a little thin 
indention or uh, line and then you've got the larger line on top of that and we'll co one cool line I really like here too is the indention here they don't just stop it at the front bumper but they bring it up here and dogleg it and bring it back into that the line of the the hood line there that makes it really kind of cool I like that on the front end you've got nice styling in the headlights you've got the typical Nissan grill and the chrome and the large badge everyone's going to uh, trying to see how large they can actually make their badges nowadays this vehicle does have that uh, panoramic sunroof so I'll give you a shot of that and out back you see like I said it's the LED uh, tail lights and a little bit of chrome strip above uh, just below the uh, Nissan badge above the license plate and then you see a little bit of chrome strip down below now this is four cylinder so it does have the single exhaust it is not available with a six cylinder this is the only engine you can get in it but um, it's pretty peppy it works pretty well cool little detail I just noticed as I'm standing here is this actual black piece here on some cars kind of melds right into the glass but here it doesn't and there's actually a little bit of a gap there so it acts kind of like a, a fin to really shoot the air around the vehicle and make it a little bit more aerodynamic. If you will, it's kind of like uh, tail fins for, the, for 2019, if you, if you will. It's kind of uh, uh, ev evokes that memory of uh, tail fins, maybe, uh, for some of you that are old enough to remember that. Or if not, Google tail fins and they'll show you what that means and uh, show you what it looked like on cars back then. So that's it for the outside review. And let's go over here and uh, see if Nathan's ready to do his inside review and it looks like he's hard at it so i'm not going to toss it over to him we're just going to let it go at it as it is all right here we are on the inside of the 2019 nissan rogue sl trim level and uh this is the driver's door we've got a really nice uh, sort of a dark and, and tan combination i think that always looks really nice a little bit of uh um, carbon fiber looking trim uh, you do have your normal uh, power windows here. The driver's side is uh, uh, auto up and down, and then you have your lock features and your window lock out. And then uh, over here you have a two position uh, memory setting for your seat. Down here you have got, uh, down here you've got eight way power, forward, backwards, up, down, tilt to back, and then power lumbar. Down here, you have got a whole bunch of switches and I love it when they never leave one out there's no empty spot here and as you would expect on this trim level so your traction control on and off here you have your um, steering assist here you have your trunk uh, open uh, your fuel uh, door open your heated steering wheel your all-wheel drive on or off sport mode and eco mode then up here you've got a nice uh, little dimmer switch for your dashboard lights and a trip reset. All right, so uh, here in the driver's uh, console, you've got, got a tack on the left, you've got your speedometer on the right, you've got a fuel gauge on the bottom of that, and then a temperature gauge on the bottom of the RPM gauge. And then you have about a 4.2 inch display in the driver's information settings. Uh, coming back here, looking at the steering wheel, over here, you've got your volume buttons, you've got your backwards and forwards or your seat buttons for your media, you've got a back button, and then these arrows all control, and along with the back button, control your driver's information center. Over here, you have dynamic cruise control, okay? And so you have, let me get my hand out of there, let it refocus for a minute. Okay, so you can uh, turn it on right here. And then that turns on everything for your dynamic cruise control. And then you can set the gap distance right here. And then, of course, resume, uh, set the cruise, cancel the cruise, and then increase or decrease a mile per hour per push. You got your voice commands right here and your phone right here. So moving back over here, you have your, uh, this is about a six to seven inch display. I want to say it's seven. Um, and you've got, of course, you got a main menu. Uh, and then you've got your map. Let me see if I can get that to show up. 
There we go. You have got some day-night settings here on a, on a simple touch switch, which is nice. You've got your audio, your, you know, your source and your connections. Um, this has a really neat camera system on it. So here I am, and I've got it in park, and I've just turned the camera on so I can see it. But do you see that it's got dynamic guidelines, but not only for here, but also over here. And you can see the sensors, backup sensors, parking sensors in the rear. Now, if I go in reverse, those lines are gonna switch. I think, whoops, I went to neutral. Okay, see now I get rear lines that swivel. Which is really nice. And then you notice the two cars that are right next to me. I, I just, I love this bird's eye view. I think it's, it is so neat and, and so super nice for safety. So if I press camera again, you get an interesting feature down here. See this little L? It's measuring the distance to the next car, giving you, like here you are inside your parking zone and how far are you from the next car. Um, I did not see these numbers in there, but I'm pretty sure if you look in the manual, you'll find that this equals a certain number of uh, feet or inches. Sure. Okay, coming down here, this is uh, dual zone climate control in here. And you've, of course, got your typical controls. you get your digital readout. You've got your on-off, your temperature setting. Passenger can go ahead and dial in what they want. And if you hit the sync button, which is right here it's called dual it resets it to whatever the driver's is okay right, just a little change in wording usually you see sync here and it says dual temperature all right down over here you've got your uh auto uh, your parking brake and you do have auto hold okay auto hold if you activate it if you if you brake for a, a stop sign or a traffic light you can let your foot off the brake and the car will will remain braked until you press the accelerator down here, you've got your USB input for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, as well as a 3.5 millimeter input jack. Down here, you've got a 12 volt outlet, and then a very nice little rubber storage tray. Back here, you have a, just what I would say is a very traditional shift knob. I like these. You just a little push button in the front here. You push that in, and then you can go into whatever gear you need to. It does have. Um, uh, what I call tiptronic shifting with a plus and minus. So if you bring the shift lever over, now you can go plus and minus. You see where it says first gear. It won't let you shift out of that when you're sitting in neutral or sitting still. So, and then to get back out of into normal drive, you just push the lever over. Go back and park. Now you got dual cup holders here, and you have two stage heated seats, low and high on both sides. And then uh, you have a little storage center right between those two. Be really good for a cell phone. Lift up the cover here. You've got some pen or pencil storage clips here, as well as another charging port for a USB charging port and another 12 volt outlet. Plus, a fairly deep storage down there. And then you've got some more storage right, right in here that's a little bit deeper pocket, right where my finger is. I really like the, the, the inside of it and the colors. I like that dark and light. So it got a light tan and kind of a black uh, charcoal gray color. Um, it is all soft touch. Um, if that's not real stitching, it certainly looks like it is. Uh, really, really, really nice. Um, you do have a Bose sound system in here. Moving up here into the driver's mirror. Rear view mirror, you've got your home link buttons, you know, you've got uh, power on or off. This is your automatic dimming rear view mirror. Sliding back here, of course, you do have a panoramic sunroof that you can open or close. And then, of course, all your reading light controls and then your SOS button. You have nice little reading lights that are right back here. You may be wondering where those are. They're right up. If you can see those, I'll move my finger. There you go, right there. Okay. And you got a nice little clip here to hold things. And then in here, of course, you've got uh, lit visors. And then you, of course, can, they are uh, telescoping and, and uh, flip up and down and move back and forth. All right, now, um, let's take a look at, let's go take a look at the passenger side real quick. 
All right, here's the passenger's door right here. Uh, you got the same color combination, which I really like, and the materials. You know, you got the soft touch here, you got the hard here. Um, your windows and lock buttons here. You've got a little storage area there. This is a four way power uh, passenger seat. And they are, uh, we have very, very nice um, leather surfacing on here. Okay. And if I open the glove compartment, you have ample storage in there as well. Okay, so in the back seat here, we have got um, some nice, again, color combination. I don't know why, I just like this color combination. Okay, nice soft touch materials here, a little storage tray here, power window, you got a bottle holder down there, another speaker. Um, this, by the way, I mentioned earlier, it's a Bose sound system. It is also nine speakers. All right, so you can see that I have oof, lots of legroom. Lots and lots of leg room here. Okay, you do have dual seat back pockets. Okay, and then you down here, you just have a standard uh, uh, climate control vents. Okay, the seats are comfortable. I've got plenty of headroom back here. And then your center armrest will pull down. And the center armrest here, then you've got dual cup holders. So overall, a very nice SUV. Uh, plenty of room, comfortable seats, and lots and lots of amenities. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are... Two Guys and a Ride. Oh, I was supposed to say that, wasn't I? You were supposed to say <laughs> that. I'm one guy in a ride today. <laughs> um, did you seriously forget to say that? I did. I'm sitting here staring off into space. It's like, all right, well, I'm thinking about what I'm going to talk about in the car, and I forget to, who we are. Okay, so here we go. Hi, folks. I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two Guys in a Ride. Wait a minute. Don't, you, don't you want to say the name of the vehicle first, and then we do it? Uh, sure. <laughs> and who says he's not a nice guy? Look at him backing up to pick me up instead of just leaving me out here. going to be kind of like the old twilight zone imagine if you will that nathan not me if nathan was doing the outside review of this 2019 nissan road sl all-wheel drive it may go something like this well today we see we've got a car and it's white and it's pretty and there's round black things down there and they turn when you drive that's really kind of cool and um, this is its ears so when you're driving it can hear what the other traffic's talking about and saying about it and maybe not like it or maybe be its friends and well this is a glass thingy and uh, there's more glass and it's got headlights and church signals so buy it well we're fortunate that Nathan knows his place. I know my place. I like the styling and the details and the tech uh, features of the outside and the horsepower. He likes the tech, the buttons and the cameras of the inside. But I thought he might get a kick out of this and maybe throw it in the blooper reel or something. So have fun with it, Nathan.